That is one of the craziest looks ever. You know, a lot of the videos, the old videos I post up, I was using a little bit of IGF-1 LR3 and I was blasting 40 to 50 milligrams of 677 while, you know, somewhat managing to keep the water retention insulin resistance under control. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Is some more spritz, intelligent iron. Hear your noises. All right, today I'm going to be talking about the GH pathway, the growth hormone pathway. This pathway is used in bodybuilding for creating new permanent muscle cells, hyperplasia. I'll have Andrew throw up hyperplasia. So basically, you have the androgen pathway increasing the size of the muscle cells and then you have the gh pathway coming in there expanding more creating new that will grow under the androgen stimulation meaning a lot of guys just only do gear they come off they shrink back to normal if you do synthetic androgens with something in the growth hormone pathway you're going to keep that hyperplasia the muscles are just going to shrink down via the ar firing in the skeletal muscles so this is a way to yo-yo your physique and at some point you'll probably be able to have a pretty significant baseline physique and you'll be able to maintain it on under 300 milligrams of test a week obviously if you go down lower you're going to shrink back to a normal person but this would be equivalent to you redlining at the start if you use gh stuff over time you could get it down to where you are cruising maintaining a significant look that you are very satisfied with and you don't really have to blast that much anymore that's the main you know thing around this is that a lot of guys don't mess with the gh pathway but they will redline the fuck out of the androgen pathway i'm just stating the gh pathway there is a lot of benefit on the pro level as well as the gym rat level of using something to increase igf1 to help your body recover faster replicate faster and get that new permanent size that even when you come off the synthetic androgens you're gonna have a better baseline i wanted to go into the craziest gh pathway setup i've done and just kind of shed light on something about secretagogues so i'm going to be talking about mk677 as the secretagogue i want to highlight in this video but this goes for any of the secretagogues so any of the injectable peptides that you're a fan of is a secretagogue secretagogue and all slots in under this. I'm using MK677 because it's an oral secretagogue. It's the most famous GH secretagogue in the world for all the lab rats around the world. And we have the most data to pull from. MK677 by far is not a perfect compound. I've Andrew Trump, the 40 minutes of me going into all the side effects that nobody on TikTok talks about and my reasonings for using 677 so much. Number one being it stimulates ghrelin. It's a ghrelin mimetic, meaning it's helped me gain the size, keep that appetite super high to be able to put down that food. But the things I wanted to highlight is when you stack 677 with regular growth hormone or IGF-1 LR3 for this example of what I personally did, you are getting multiple types of growth hormones out of the 677. I already prefaced Andrew's going to have to pull this science, but it's not very well understood what these other growth hormones do. Basically, when you inject growth hormone, you're shutting your pituitary down from releasing its own growth hormone, which apparently the pituitary releases multiple types of growth hormones where the injectable is just one type. So if you have MK677 hard stimulating your pituitary gland against its will to secrete GH, with the multiple growth hormones while injecting GH or going downstream and injecting IGF-1 LR3, you now have the craziest hyperplasia environment possible to gain shit tons of tissue very quickly if you combine it with really hardcore synthetic androgens. I won't use the term mass blast. I'll have Andrew throw up the Tony mass blast, but I do see IGF-1 LR3 only being 
I wouldn't even call it safe, but I would call it like mitigate risk by doing IGF-1 LR3 in very short burst and being extremely on point when you're doing IGF-1 LR3. I did this experiment, I think with S23. And yeah, that's one of the craziest looks ever. You know, a lot of the videos, the old videos I post up, I was using a little bit of IGF-1 LR3 and I was blasting 40 to 50 milligrams of 677 while, you know, somewhat managing to keep the water retention insulin resistance under control. It ended up me gaining a shit ton of size very quickly, crazy fullness. And when I went off that cycle back into a cruise, I was at for sure a new set point. And I only think I did two vials of LR3 because LR3 scares the fuck out of me because I personally can feel it growing my intestines. If I do LR3 and then I eat a bunch of fucking food. I can feel the blood go into my intestines and I can feel that GH gut bullshit going on. So that's like what I wanted to drill home on is that you got to keep the insulin resistance under control and know that IGF-1 LR3 is a get in get out type compound. It's the most powerful GH pathway compound besides like Increlex, a really good growth hormone, which you could also do, but I'm just saying what I did. But since since I combined that with my synthetic androgens, which was Sustanon and S23, I didn't just grow my muscle cells while I was on cycle. I fucking was growing muscle cells with the 677 and IGF-1 LR3 growing new ones. And I was increasing the size with the test, the S23, to again, encourage more architecture development in my skeletal tissue. This led to me having a new set point physique. I do want people to know that there is some weird benefit, apparently, of using a secretagog. And there's not just, you know, I've, I've tried CJC with DAC. I've tried them all. In my opinion, 50, 40 milligrams MK677. If you want to put it up with the paranoia side effects and the constant insulin resistance while having an oral form factor that pulses GH all day, it's hard to argue against 677. And when you combine 677 with LR3, it's constant stimulation all day in the GH pathway while you're resting your IGFs through the roof you're getting these multiple growth hormones released from the pituitary gland from 677 using your own bioidentical growth hormones and you could obviously replace this with regular growth hormone i'm saying is that it is synergistic to use 677 or a secretagog with injectable gh or injectable igf igf lr3 is no joke i definitely want to do that for long extended periods of time uh, the cancer risk if you have already cancer growing you are dumping gas on that fire like there's a lot of issues with lr3 but if you like okay i'm gonna do like the peak of my blast you know week two to six if you add in all that gh stuff you're on point with your diet you're killing yourself in the gym obliterating your cns obliterating all your tissue and you have that 677 and igf1 in there your body's using that to the max you will have a new set point physique by the end of the cycle and it won't be comparable if you just did the androgens without doing that meaning I would rather see people spend money in the GH pathway because it's more permanent, keepable results. It creates a new set point. It allows you to redo your cycles over time and harm mitigate because you're not constantly trying to grow the same cells. You have new cells. You also have to think like this needs to be talked about in the sense of we have all these guys redlining androgens, synthetic androgens, and they are just spinning their wheels. And I'm watching it year after year. They're spinning their wheels. They're not doing anything in the GH pathway. When we think of the anabolic pathways, you know, GH, local growth factors, myostatin, androgen. Now I know neurosteroid pathway. Like there's all these different ones and you can't just put all your eggs in one basket. You gotta realize it's a giant equation and adapt it around. But I do want to say that there is some weird benefit of doing 677 with regular growth hormone and or IGF-1 LR3. I definitely could see keeping that pituitary on yield more gains. Very cost effective product, 677, very useful product for the price. Obviously, it has its list of side effects like everything else, and it's not really 
It's not really fun to use in high dosages, but I do attribute my ability to sit at 250 on minimal gear from using my GH pathway. I don't have to do massive amounts. The first time I got to this weight, I was doing massive amounts to try and stay at this weight. Now I easily stay at this weight. My set point physique has changed and I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty, I like being 250. This mobile, this cardio heavy, obviously I can cut it up to 225, but I'm not on a lot of shit to maintain this. And that starts from you realizing that you only have so many steroid blasts where you can blast the moon and you might as well shove shit in the GH pathway to create new permanent muscle cells, new hyperplasia of all your body to recover faster and to allow the cycle to work better. I'll see you guys in my next video.